what is the most interesting person you've ever met? God, that's a really hard question. Mm. I'd have to really think. Yeah, you've got uh, a lot of people over there. Uh, I think it's probably a tie between um, Andy Warhol and Bob Dylan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I toured with Bob Dylan with another band after the Rockettes. I gave Rockabilly a break, Mm -hmm. and I have a band called the Havelinas. And uh, um, we were playing, opening a show in uh, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got the album here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's in the band of the Yeah, Tim, Tim Scott McConnell, uh, the center guy here. Okay. Was in the Rockettes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So years later, you know, he had had, he'd been signed and he'd had a few hits and here mm-hmm. and there, and, and we became friends again. And we decided, you know, he wasn't doing rockabilly anymore, and I wanted mm-hmm. to try something different. This was 1989. Okay. 88, 89. And uh, we played a show in Hollywood at the Roxy, and uh, I went, we're in the dressing room, we're going on in like five minutes, and I always get nervous before I go on, still do. Mm-hmm. And I, I either go and have a piss or just like just to, you know, just right, to get my nerves up mm-hmm. yeah. and I came back to the dressing room and the guys go hey it was Charlie the drummer and Tim said hey Smuddy you just missed Bob Dylan and I said what do you mean I just missed Bob Dylan they said he was just in the dressing room and he actually asked where you were and I said okay. fuck off <laughs> <laughs> Dylan in the dressing room but I said, so we went out and started you know playing the first song and I was yeah. like it wasn't a massive club mm-hmm. it was just a nice club great sound yeah. and I was looking around for someone that could be or resembled Bob mm-hmm. Dylan and then right at the back in the corner, I see a guy with a, a French beret on and Ray Charles blind glasses and a cape. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I wonder if that's Bob Dylan because he kind of doesn't look like anyone else here. <laughs> and turns out he was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they, uh, it was Bob Dylan. Okay. And then uh, we were managed by my wife at the time, Alice, and um, the Bob Dylan's manager called us because his son had come to our early gigs in the, in an Irish pub. Mm. We didn't want to get a record deal. We all, all of these guys in the Havelinas had had enough. Mm-hmm. We'd had enough with the music industry. Yeah. We just decided to put a band together that we liked, play what we wanted mm-hmm. in an Irish pub for free every mm-hmm. Tuesday. Yeah. That kind of grew mm-hmm. because of all the people I knew. So like, you know, one night we had Sean Lennon, Billy Idol and the Colt and okay. Blondie were there. Word kind of got out pretty mm-hmm. fast. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, it's about the size of Dylan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then so people would get up and jam, like the Bowie's band, Tin Machine, and, yeah. you know, the Colt were there. And uh, we didn't want a record deal. I mean, mm-hmm. record companies started coming, of course. And, yeah. and he started to write something that was like a, a hint of rockabilly, but mm-hmm. more based on folk music of Woody Guthrie, mm-hmm. Johnny Cash, and Bob Dylan. Mm-hmm. He played mm-hmm. acoustic guitar and harmonica. And then I think, I remember, it was only $2 to get in. Okay. I remember some labels coming to the front of the line saying, oh, I'm Virgin Records, let us in. And we'd be like, it's $2. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I have to pay? Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's going towards the band. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. But that happened a lot. But then one, one day a label came, Electra Records, Carol Childs, so was, uh, I think, dating Bob. Mm. But um, Bob's son, we used to sneak in the back door. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jacob, he was in the Wallflowers. He must have told his dad. Okay. Obviously, he told his dad because yeah. he was he was a big fan of us and our songs. Okay. So uh, we got the Dylan tour, and uh, the record company said, uh, "I remember saying to the label, our record wasn't finished. We mm-hmm. mixed it at Dave Stewart's house from the Rhythmix and recorded it at the Sound Factory, mm-hmm. and um, we <coughs> toured with Bob. Uh, he travelled separate from the band and a different hotel, so we didn't get to really see him on the whole tour. Okay." And at the end of the tour, Carol said, Bob's having a birthday party in the colony in Malibu. Would mm. you guys like to come? And we thought we'd better buy him something. Yeah. So um, we went out and bought him this little travel guitar and we, we, we'd go through like many security checks because he'd bought all the other houses on the colony too. So you had to go through one house, then to another house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was smoking, I'd started smoking weed then. And then mm-hmm. um, and Charlie, Charlie'd known him before and played with him. He said, you know, if, if Bob comes out, Smuddy, don't, don't say nothing. I said, don't say nothing. He said, if he says anything, just say yes or no. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. He said, just say yes or no. That's it. You okay. got it. And I said, okay, 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 I got it. And so we well, had a bit of a puff and, uh, you know, and uh, then I see Bob walking towards us. And this time he's got a cape on, 
mm-hmm. and he's playing a flute. It's dark and he's got glasses on and the French beret again. Okay. I'm thinking, and so we, he comes over with Carol and we show him the guitar and, you know, Charlie was smoking. I didn't, I was a light smoker, but they were smoking something. And um, Bob was opening it like he'd never seen a guitar before. And I'm just, I've started to get a little bit like nervous, yeah. mm-hmm. thinking I'm sitting here with Bob Dylan and in his garden mm-hmm. and Charlie was, you know, kicking me under the table, trying to remind me not to say anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then uh, Bob says, hey man, uh, you guys are really good on the tour, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, and then I just blurted out, I said, yeah. I heard waves. Mm-hmm. And then um, I thought, oh, um, I just blurted out, um, is that the ocean I can hear? I just saw Charlie gives me this look like, <laughs> smutty, yeah. smutty. Yeah. And then Bob just went, put the thing down, and he put his glasses down on the table. He goes, smutty. I said, uh, yes, Bob. He said, would you like to go to the ocean? And I said, no, 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 no. I just, I just heard the waves. And then he said, oh, yeah, it's the waves. Mm-hmm. Put his glasses back on. But yeah. I, I, He was just messing with me, but... Yeah. Um, I shouldn't have said nothing. I should, yeah. have, I should have listened to the drummer. Yeah. Say, say nothing, do nothing. Just yeah. say hi, Bob. Goodbye, uh, Bob. Hello, Bob. Uh, what yeah. kind of guy was Bob Dylan? Very, very cool. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very nice. And just, you know, he invited us to his party and yeah. put us on tour. And, uh, you know, uh, and the same with Springsteen, you know. He mm-hmm. came to a show one time. We were playing with Chris Isaac at the Wilton. It was sold out. Mm. And I remember a knock on the door and we were going on. And um, I opened the door and there's Bruce Springsteen and his wife. Yeah. And we were opening for Chris Isaac. Sold out show in uh, the Wilton Theatre. And I said, oh, uh, um, Bruce, we're going on in a minute. Um, Chris Isaac's dressing room's upstairs. This is the Havelinas. Thinking it'd be like, oh. But he said... I know I didn't come to see Chris Isaac. I came to see you. Ah. And I was like, oh, okay. do you want to come in? We got 10 minutes. Yeah. And he came in and we were just talking about, I had a 55 Rocket 88 and he started telling me about his cars and how he loved, loved fixing them. And mm-hmm. and he said, have you got any swag? And I said, swag? He said, yeah, a T-shirt and, and for me and my wife. I said, yeah. And I went and got him a Havelina's T-shirt and his wife. And, uh, and then um, we went on stage and there, there was the monitors were on the side. Mm. And Bruce came up and stood on the side of the stage. So we're the opening band for Chris Isaac. But okay. imagine the audience, right? Yeah. So you're looking at the Havelinas, but Bruce Springsteen yeah. standing in the monitors wearing the Havelina <laughs> shirt. <laughs> so we're like, I, everyone's like, yeah. Uh. You know. <laughs> okay. So then uh, years later, Bruce Springsteen uh, released this MTV Unplugged thing of our single High mm-hmm. Hopes which is on this album it's the single okay. it's the title of the music video okay, okay. Was, which was on MTV mm-hmm. then I don't know four or five years ago he redid it he called the album High Hopes the single High Hopes and the video High Hopes okay he was a definitely a, a big fan and Ledford yeah. has gone on to win two Grammys yeah uh, and he's writing music for that show Exit mm-hmm. which is on in Iceland yeah he does this, he's in it and he writes music for okay. it okay and he uh, produces Norwegian bands, and he lives mm-hmm. in Norway. Okay, okay. I So it. that's uh, uh, Warhol. I think Warhol or Dylan. I think it would yeah. be for me. Yeah. Both um, and Bowie, of course. Yeah. But big, big uh, larger than life characters. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like you. Elvis Torvald, Atlan Thorsten, Farðinau. Broadcast.is. Það er áskrift.